Hello, and welcome to our 12 Days of Holiday Nail Art featuring designs from me, Talia, at Talia's Nail Tales, and from me, Sarah, from Sarah's Nail Secrets. For the next 12 days, we'll be sharing with you 12 different themes of nail art for this time of year. Talia is a gel tech, and Sarah is an acrylic tech, so you will get a special gift of watching two different techniques for each theme. If you recreate any of these designs, please use the hashtag Secret Nail Tales on social media so we can check them out. We hope you enjoyed this gift from us, and let's get started. Welcome to day two. Day two, it was themed Snowflake. So this is the Snowflake design that I came up with. Today's video is actually going to be a Watch Me Work style. So if you're not familiar with my Watch Me Work style videos on this channel, what they are is a mix between regular salon life with me interacting with my clients, as well as the glamorous tutorial. So they're a little bit different than a traditional tutorial. My mom's first time being in a watch me work. My first step when I remove any fill nails, especially for my mom, is to begin by taking off all of her Swarovski crystals. Oh my god. <sighs> that one hit the ceiling. Did it? So you're snowflakes and we're doing red, right? Yeah, I think it was that, you like that, that red fixin', color. The fixin' red yeah. that you got. Did you like that better than the light elegance one? The cherry cordial? Yeah. I like the cherry cordial till I saw the vixen. Yeah, me too. And then we're gonna do a crystal snowflake. That I wanna mm -hmm. do for sure. I think we will do some form of sugar nails. Good, I like that. The sugar nails don't bug you though, do they? No, they actually stay on quite nicely for me. As long as you don't put them in the first two nails, I'm fine. Okay, yeah, I remember I did it on my pointer nail once and I like hated it. I think I took it off the next day, it was driving me so nuts. You just use your pointer nails so much. I do. Well, the first two fingers, that's keyboarding for everything. Yeah. When I remove Swarovski crystals, I use a mix between cuticle nippers, toenail clippers, and regular nail clippers. It just depends on the size of the Swarovski crystal as to what I'm using. After I've removed the previous design and prepped the nails, I'm gonna go in with my Fusion Gription. Fusion Gription is one of my favorite primers. After my primer, I'm gonna go in with my Ugly Duckling Gel Brush and apply some of my Fusion Clear Base. This just adds a nice layer down on the nails for any other glitter to rest on top of or glitter gels or colors. I just like to have kind of a layer down protecting the natural nail before I go in with any of my colors when I embed my products. Using my Light Elegance Oval Number no. 4 brush and some Fusion Vixen, which is this gorgeous, perfect for Christmas red velvet type of color, I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply this on my mom's pinky nail as well as her thumbnail. Now Fusion Color Gels are a little bit thicker than say something like Light Elegance or Amore, so when I apply them I like to take kind of a bigger blob and then kind of float it all over the nail. And when it's time to get in nice and close to the cuticle and the free edge, that's when I switch to my Ugly Duckling Omni tool. And I use this to go around the cuticles and around the free edge and just get in nice and tight there so that there is little separation between the two areas. On my mom's middle finger, I'm going to take some En Vogue Goddess. It is this gorgeous gold foil type of color. I want like the chunky gold, Ooh. like the foily gold. But this one pops all on its own. So oh my gosh, look at that. What are you gonna do on top of it? I don't even know. That's red crystals probably. Red crystals would pop on this. I think so, okay. That's I was gonna do this on two it. nails, but no, I think it's just two, so, okay. yeah. I think that should have been on my ring finger. No, because I want the snowflakes on your ring finger. The snowflake crystal on your ring finger. Okay. Always trying to tell me how to do your nails. <sighs> what can I say? Mother knows best, she thinks. What is that song from? In Mother's own, knows best. In her own mind. Tangled, right? Hey, hey no comparisons there. You and Rose have watched Tangled lots, oh, haven't yes, you? We have. we have, so. Mother knows best. <laughs> After much deliberation, my mom and I decided that we were going to do a diagonal half and half snowflake on her pointer finger. So I'm taking some more of the Fusion Fix-In and I'm just applying it at an angle with my Light Elegance Oval Number no. 4 brush. After I apply this, I'm going to go in with some white swimsuit from Light Elegance for the white. People are going to watch this and be like, wow, you're so mean to your mom. Hey mom? Well, it's funny, you ask me when I want on my nails, I tell you and I never get that. No, nope. you even bring in pictures and I don't even look at them, do I? No, well actually you look at them and say, mm, no. <laughs> Light Elegance's white swimsuit is my favorite pearl white color gel. 
I use this all the time this time of year. You guys can see how dangerously low I'm getting. I need to get another one and I'm just kind of scraping the sides of the packaging to make sure that I'm using it all up. But what I'm doing with the white is I'm just applying it to the other side of the red nail here. After I have the color gel down, I go back in with my Ugly Duckling Omni tool again, just around the cuticles and the side walls, and I swipe it clean with my Ugly Duckling gel brush because it has nothing on it but clear gel. My preferred gel of choice right now is Fusions 5. Fusion 5 has a thicker viscosity, which makes it really nice because it stays where you put it. But at the same time, when you apply it the way that I do with one little slip layer down, then go back in with a bigger blob and kind of drag it back and forth across the nail. It makes Fusion 5 a lot easier to work with. Uh, before I started doing the little slip layer down, I struggled with Fusion 5. But once you know how to work with Fusion 5, it's great because it stays where you place it, but at the same time moves around so you can get it your apex in the right spot and get the gel exactly where you want it to go. After I'm done applying my gel, I do my finish file and I go in and buff the nails as well. We're going to skip a little bit ahead here and talk about some art. I was wondering what the difference was with this kit. This one looks like it has a red finish. Maybe I'm looking at pink head. This is the kind of snowflake I want to have with the, with the crystals on and the beads. Okay, I but just obviously like bigger. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the kind of layout I was thinking I was having. I think I'm going to have to try and paint it because I don't think I have one that big. The only big one that I have is like this one. Do you have any that got swirl like wind? Ooh, those. I could totally stamp this probably to no, because it's way too big. This kind snowflake. of swirl. This is the swirl I'm talking about. For what? It looks like the wind swirl by the by one of the the snowflakes. Like the the wind is swirling. The you know what? Around. I bet I could do this as your base and then do your sugar snowflake on top of it. I'll stamp that as the base without the snowflakes in it. Yes. And then do a big snowflake on top of it. A big sugar well, snowflake. Well, that's the on first top. one. They get it right between them. Between them. But it's yeah. a thicker, it's a thicker swirl than that. Yeah, I'm gonna need that one though. Cool. Okay. So which one are you gonna do on here, the half and half? I don't know. Like something like this? Yeah. So it fits half and half on there? Mm-hmm. Or even this one. I love I, this one. I like this one. That's, that's very this pretty. one right there. This would look beautiful for crystals too, just a little larger. Yeah. For stamping today, I'm gonna to be using my clear jelly stamper, big bling stamper white stamping polish, as well as this one, which is called Pass the Pinot. This stamping plate has become my favorite stamping plate for snowflakes. It is called Diamonds on Ice, and it's from the Clear Jelly Stamper, just like all the stamping products I just showed you. Sometimes stamping with the Clear Jelly Stampers can be a little bit finicky, so you want to make sure you're using a really good, high-quality stamping polish. Scrape your polish off with a light stroke, then you're just going to pick up the polish and place it straight down on the nail. You want to make sure you're working quickly. Ooh. You like that? Okay. Wood. And then we'll do a sugar snowflake on top of it. This one I want to do like your sugar coming down. But sugar I want to do last because it makes a giant mess. Okay. So to stamp the duo-toned snowflake, I'm just going to apply some of the past the Pinot on half of this snowflake here. And then I'm going to apply the white on the other half. Scrape it down with my scraper, trying to make it as perfectly straight as humanly possible. Pick it up on my stamper and take a little bit of extra time just to make sure that you're positioning it properly. What do you think? I love it. Did we do it okay or was I crooked? I think you're fine. What do you think? I think you're fine. Hmm, it actually doesn't look too bad. That's like kind of weird. It's kind of trippy. Hey? I'm liking it. That's trippy. Okay, let's do your other one. Just wait till you put some finish on that, it's going to shine yeah. beautifully. Ooh. <laughs> do you like them? I like those. Okay, good. That looks cool. Okay, what are we doing next? Sugar is last, which means we're going to do your crystal. Okay, so we're going to stamp a snowflake to be our guide. This one, right? I think that's a good start. You can branch out from there. Yeah, and then I'm going to stamp it in the red. I wanted to make sure that my crystal snowflake looked like a real snowflake. So in order to do that, I wanted to use a stamp to be my guide. Just because I don't think I can imagine where it's gonna go on its own. Okay, so that gives us a base of where to start. But I don't wanna use big crystals at all. I think I just wanna use little ones. That's what I was thinking. That's why I was asking you yeah. which ones you have an abundance of yeah. or beads. These crystals are called light silk. I'm gonna use some silver beads, some opal crystals, and some clear crystals. 
To begin my crystal design, I'm going to take my micro swab here and I just get these off of eBay. I'm also using my Ugly Duckling Blinger tool. The crystal that I'm putting in the middle is an SS12 size and it is the light silk color. And then where all these little spokes of the snowflake are is where I'm going to add little beads. These little boolean beads, I honestly cannot remember where I got them from. I want to say eBay, but I know I've seen similar on like Daily Charm. Canada Nail Supplies might have some as well. So the crystal glue that I'm using here to apply my Swarovski crystals and these boolean beads is Light Elegance's Nail Glue. Light Elegance's Nail Glue works fabulous for crystals. I have zero complaints about it, but it does not work well for these boolean beads. Uh, my mom actually ended up losing quite a bit of them rather quickly actually, so if I were to do this design again, I would actually apply like a thicker gel like bling on or something like that and I would make sure my boolean beads are put into gel and not the nail resin. It just did not hold very well and even though I tried to surround them at the end to make them stay a little bit better, they didn't hold very well. So just a little tip, don't do what I'm doing here when I'm showing you guys to do it like this. <laughs> These clear crystals are an SS9 size and they fit perfectly with the design. After I'm done applying these, I'm going to go in with some boolean beads to just finish up the look. I almost like it with just the clears. No beads? No, like with um, like no colors, like no gold I, or... I, I agree. It'll look more like a genuine crystal snowflake. Yeah. If you stay with just clears, but clears are your popular ones. Okay, look at that and then we're going to go... Um, smaller. I'm thinking two smalls. On the ends? Yeah. Perfect. I really like how this Swarovski crystal snowflake came together by using just the clear crystals and that light silk in the middle, but it would be pretty cool to do like an opal snowflake or something too, or do some different snowflake designs, not just this type of pattern. But let me know what you guys think of their Swarovski crystal snowflake. I love how it turned out. It's just too bad it didn't hold. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at it. Do you like it? I love it. I love it. And you can even leave the little ones on the end. Yeah, it does look good with it, the little ones on the end. Fine. It looks good. So on her middle finger, I wanted to add some red to kind of tie the red in together, I guess. So this Swarovski crystal color that I'm using is called Siam. It is a beautiful, like bright, dark red. It doesn't match Vixen perfectly, but it's a pretty good complement. So the crystal in the middle is an SS20. The two on the sides there are SS9, and then the smallest crystal is an SS5. I just keep doing this type of a pattern using these variants of crystal sizes until I get my desired look. This is one of my favorite patterns to do because it almost looks like jewelry kind of hanging off of her nail. I love how this turned out. For the sugar nails, I'm going to be using Glitter Heaven's Complete Sugar Kit. It has a variety of different shades to the sugar tones, which is really nice. I'm also going to be using Fusion's Paint in 101, which is a beautiful white, and Jelly Fit Australia's non wipe Top Coat. When you're doing sugar nails, you want to make sure that you apply your top coat first. I make this mistake every single time, you guys, no joke. I usually just go and do the sugar nail right on top of a finished file nail and then you have to try and top coat around it. It's just a pain in the butt. Do your top coat first and then it'll be a lot easier. So to paint my designs for the sugar nails, I'm going to be using Ugly Duckling's Detailer Number no. 2 brush. It is my favorite brush for doing any sort of line detail. What I'm doing on her pinky is I'm just painting an icicle looking image with the fusion paints. I really enjoy using the fusion paints to do sugar nails for a few reasons. I find the consistency of the fusion paints to be really nice. It's a nice thin consistency but super pigmented. In combination with the detailed number no. 2 brush, it just glides across the nails. The fusion paints also cure to a tackless finish, which means that the sugar embossing powder just kind of rests in the nails when it cures. You don't have to worry about there being like a sticky layer. I personally find that tackless top coats or tackless products for sugar works the best. I find the little fluff brush from the Selena Ride and Light Elegance collection brush the best for applying the sugar powder. I find that it kind of just drops the right amount into the product without it like touching the product and messing it up. I was really happy with this technique. One of you guys actually suggested using a fan brush to me when doing the sugar technique and it is a lifesaver. It's so much easier than dumping the, a whole bunch of product on the nail and you waste far less sugar powder.
I'm going to do the exact same technique on her thumb, but just follow the design of the swirl from the stamp. I am not somebody who can hand paint swirls very nicely, so if I can use a stamp to guide me, it makes my job so much easier. Don't worry about your swirls being super perfect, because once you apply the sugar powder, it doesn't even matter. You can't even tell if your lines were crooked or anything like that. After I have applied the sugar powder, I cure it. You also want to make sure with sugar nails that you're curing it for double the time, just to make sure you have no problems with it lifting off. The heck, Mom? How did you not think of that? I thought you were just being plain Jane on this heck one. Heck no. Honey, it's my pointer. I need plain Jane on this You can handle one crystal on it. Better not have laces on my shoes. I better use Velcro. <laughs> Oh gosh, you can handle one SS9. To finish off the design, I'm just going in with my Jellyfit Australia Tackless Top Coat. I'm really enjoying using this Tackless Top Coat. I find that when it goes over top of stamps, it doesn't separate like some of the other top coats that I've used on the market. And also when I top gloss around crystals, you never want to top gloss Swarovski crystals. It takes the shine away. So take a small brush and just go around them. But like I said, for those Boolean beads, you want to make sure that you are sealing them in better than what I did. And that's the design. I hope you guys enjoyed watching day two, which was snowflake themed. I had so much fun designing like a unique snowflake design nail. Make sure that you head on over to Sarah's nail secret page and see what she came up with for snowflake nails. They're pretty darn cool, you guys. I'll have a link in the description box as well as on this video. Don't forget to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow's theme is gonna be Christmas sweater. I can't wait to show you guys what we came up with for Christmas sweater designs. Make sure you're following me on all my social media and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.